What is up, skaters? Uh, hello, hello, hello. Hello from the other side. What a man sugar high. <laughs> hello, 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 everybody. I'm Matt the Bat from Matt the Bat's Batshit Shit Show. And will you look at that? Another episode of the Simp Series. This is the series where I geek out about all my favorite creators in a purely positive and loving light. Hey, if you're new here, please make sure to smash that like button, followed by the subscribe button, followed by the little bell notification. Ding! That way you can stay up to date on all of the upcoming episodes. I'm about to launch a bunch of new series under the Batch Shit Show umbrella and your girl Lauren's very first interview, Yes First, will be dropping next week and I cannot wait to show you all. So you're going to want to be subscribed. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go! Yes sir, the crowd out here is riled up because we have some big time Lauren fans in the audience. Uh, and I get it because there's a lot to simp about when it comes to our virgin, girl boss, IBS queen, Lauren Brodoff. She's truly one of a kind, very funny, and someone I've gotten to know over the past couple months. Uh, she's wonderful. So let's dive in. Lauren Brodoff is a 22-year-old YouTuber from North Carolina who makes a wide array of you, know, you like that? <laughs> array? Yeah, I, I use that. I'm trying to vocab this shit up. I realized I was lacking a little bit, so, you know, I'm practicing a little vocab in there. No biggie. <laughs> I should shut the f*** up. People are going to stop watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, she makes a wide variety of comedic videos, from vlog type videos to ridiculous Omega experiments to cooking videos to some YouTube type videos with a Lauren twist. Uh, to most recently, some music videos like this one. Harry, would you like to marry me? Because yeah, she's a very versatile creator and we love versatility on this channel. Yes, we do. And it's this versatility that I'm now talking about for like a third or fourth time that has led her to over 330,000 subscribers and 17 million channel views. As I mentioned before, absolute girl boss. She's crushing it. And though those numbers are pretty astounding, when you look at her content, you can kind of see that there's really something for everybody within her catalog of videos, so it's really not that surprising. And I mentioned before that her content really spans through so many genres, really demonstrating how creative and experimental she really is as a content creator. And just as, as a small example, if you look at her three most viewed videos, you get a taste of this, this range. Her most viewed video has 1.9 million views and is titled, I Ask Strangers on Omegle for Life Advice. I have chronic constipation. The next is at 870,000 views and it's called, I DM My Selfie to 100 Celebrities and Ask Them on a Date. Joe Jonas, baby. This is real, this is me. Followed by, what if Freddie Mercury sang like Halsey? One of my personal favorites, so funny. Editing's great. <laughs> at 780,000 views. And I mean, if these three different titles aren't so telling of the vast Lauren Brodoff universe, then I just don't know what is. I mean, look, it's crazy. My point is Lauren has garnered a pretty loyal fan base that's willing to hear her out with any of her creative endeavors, which is something I personally am super jealous of, you know, considering it's like pulling teeth to get you guys to watch my videos. <sighs> Stein said. Deep breaths. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Relax, Let's stick around, please. <laughs> but no, from making an OnlyFans for her houseplant to her various quests for love across the internet, her fans are pretty much with her every step of the way, and it's all you can ask for as a young creator who is sort of navigating this transition from this just being a YouTube hobby to being a real career and I don't know, I think that's just pretty awesome. But I guess the question is like, how was she able to really cultivate such an impressive fandom over her? I mean, she's, she's a random girl in suburbia. She's not giving out Teslas or blowing millions on pranks. So how is it possible that she's able to maintain such a loyal ass fan base of over 300,000 people? And after diving so deep on this, I think I have the answer. And the answer is that Lauren is just being herself. And in an internet universe where no one else is, I can't tell you how much I appreciate watching something like this because it's all you know personality driven and her personality is awesome she's funny and she gets that life is kind of mundane and she just absorbs that and and gives it back out to people and uh she doesn't play this card of being this massive youtuber who is who's better than you or who flaunts their expensive shit and their financial freedom to blow money on any video that they can like 
it, you know, she's all in, in her bedroom. She's still a girl who loves Harry Styles. She's still hopelessly looking for love and probably can't find it because she's so weird. And Lauren, I say that with love because weird is kind of my thing, if you can't tell by this YouTube show. And I think it really adds to your character and kind of this brand that you've built. And this entire package of her personality and how you see a glimpse into her life really creates such a strong picture of someone that could be your friend in the real world. And I think that's been reassuring for people who have been locked inside because of the pandemic and whatever else. And like, there comes a point where you just can't talk to Mima all day. Like, you gotta go and, and follow your girl Lauren, who's awkward like you and, and and makes you laugh and join her on her virtual journeys because it, it's just fun and it takes you away from whatever you're dealing with in your house like like your Mima. <laughs> you know what I mean and this kind of reflection of her as a regular young 20 something year old who's still kind of figuring it out and having fun doing it is something that people can actually relate to it's like what better way to connect to someone than understanding that their situation is pretty close to yours. And another side note, this feeling uh, or this vibe of being ordinary is something that I always connected with through television. If you know me, I reference Nickelodeon a lot in my life because I remember feeling super connected to a lot of the characters uh, like Arnold from Hey Arnold or Doug Funny from Doug or even Ginger Fowley from As Told by Ginger. Not because I'm a ginger, shut the f up. But um, <laughs> no, the characters were like the epitome of ordinary. It, they were just so easy to connect to, especially Ginger in a weird way. Shut up. No, not because of the hair, uh, but because she was kind of this artistic girl. I wasn't a girl, I don't think, but I, I was artistic and in a suburb just like her, like a middle class family just dealing with with middle class things and going through puberty and being a young kid who like loved to write and all that stuff. Uh, so I kind of understand. And with, with Lauren, I think that what she's offering to her fans and maybe I'm just zoning way too hard in on this, but you know, that's kind of like my, my thing for this, this series. Um, but I think she's offering them this sense of relatability. And I think that's really awesome. This very real and honest and sometimes like rough and choppy reflection of her life is actually reflected in her editing, which often features little inserts of her reacting to potentially uh, ridiculous or cringy things that she says. I'm guessing she's doing it during like the editing process and she's looking back and just <laughs> reacting on it. Here's like an example of that. And she also adds in these little like rough and hilarious photoshops and animations that I'm a sucker for and uh, once again really drive home this idea of being homegrown and things not needing to be flashy to be effective in catching a viewer's attention. And we see this with minimalism in her thumbnails too and just the general structure of her videos. And a good example of this is that she pretty much throws out all YouTube best practices out the window because she can. A lot of YouTube is about being huge. This is a never ending giant mountain of cash. And as much cash as you can carry, you can keep. And it's about making these thumb stopping, jaw dropping introductions to keep viewer attention. But with Lauren, she doesn't need the bells and whistles to make her fans watch her. It's pretty uh, extraordinary. I mean, here's an example of one of her introductions. Empire State La France. Croissant Chalamet, wet dream tomato. There's nothing you can't do. Now you're in La France. Bro, if I fucking did that, these people would unsubscribe so fast. <laughs> I would be left in the fucking YouTube dust for all of eternity and people would never find me. Uh, so, in fact, this is your reminder to like, subscribe, and smash that little bell notification. Ding! Uh, and then comment at the end. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And above all, Lauren's creator economy is really just beginning to form. And we talk about this a lot in the show uh, as that term is being tossed around by a lot of YouTubers and stuff like that. Uh, but she's branched out into making music and behind the scenes of the making of the songs and is now doing some traveling to other countries as we just saw in a recent video to France, which was quite the journey. God has blessed me today. He has blessed he has blessed my being, he has not blessed my bowels because once again, the second I sat down onto this nine hour flight, I had to shit so bad and I still do. And the possibilities are really endless when it comes to how Lauren can extend her brand, whether that be with merch or with more ads. Um, she, you know, she's got a lot on the table in my humble bat opinion because she's been building these stepping stones over the past couple of years for people to fall in love with her and her personality and all the little jokes and themes that come with it. For example, if you watch Lauren's content, you know that she's the IBS queen. I mean, she took something as ridiculous and weird as irritable bowel syndrome and made it a reoccurring theme throughout her videos, which is hilarious. And if you watch her videos, you would know that she is the great Freddie Mercury's daughter who loves Harry Styles and Timothy Chalamet. Bonjour, Timothy. You can call me good girl all you would like. 
No, inappropriate. That is inappropriate. And I don't even think she knows she's doing it, but these little themes and, and tropes throughout her, her videos are building such a strong cult following. And I see it through the comments and I just think it's so smart for her brand. And at the end of the day, it's so nice to find creators that we can wholeheartedly trust and relate to. And unfortunately, you know, I find personally that uh, as our favorite creators blossom and become really successful, uh, some of them, not all, but some of them lose that early YouTube humbleness they used to have. And for me, launching this show, uh, I did it out of kind of like this deep feeling of wanting to connect with people through YouTube, which was always a dream of mine when YouTube first came out. And looking back on it now, I think, wow, I should have done more to make this a reality. Because when you watch people like Lauren, you really just can't help but feel excited to see things starting to take off and just seeing her just do such a great job of making funny content and building her world. So I just appreciate what she's doing so far. And I don't think that humbleness is gonna be lost from Lauren anytime soon because that's her, that's her personality. And uh, I don't know, to you, Lauren, we simp. What, what can I say? I'm a simp. I just, I, I am. <laughs> Everybody, I'm at the bat from at the bat's batch shit show. And this was such a fun episode of the simp series. I, I truly love doing this so much and it means the world to me to see each of you coming back every week. I feel like we're building kind of this really small community around this show and it's, it's honestly like a dream come true. So thank you so much. Uh, by the way, shout out to one of my new viewers, Cy Ameth. Um, they called me out on my shit for missing an upload last week and I actually really appreciated that uh, because it, it shows me that you care. So uh, thank you so much. There are so many things in the works, so bear with me as I kind of go through this trans transition period of uh, building out my show. There's gonna be a bunch of new series and all, all that kind of stuff. And if you love Lauren like I do, um, there's, we have an incredible interview coming out next week, so you're going to want to be subscribed. Hit the like, subscribe, comment, uh, as I said before, and I can't wait for you guys all to check it out. So tune in next week or else.